Good day to everyone. Welcome back again to our class, uh, Fundamental of Christian Beliefs. And for today, we are going to study the lesson about the heavenly, uh, the heavenly sanctuary. Before we begin, let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we pray that you may be with us as we study this lesson and we increase our understanding. In this name we pray. Amen. Now, the first question of this lesson that we need to ask is, where does God live? Now, in Psalm 139, verse 5 to 10, the Bible says, You have hedged me behind and before and la laid your hand upon me. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lift me and your right hand shall hold me. So God is able to be everywhere at the same time and that is known as omnipresent. He can be anywhere, but he decided to choose a specific place to meet with the angels and with the non-fallen worlds and with us when we'll be finally be with him. Now, if we could look at um, 1 Kings 8 verse 30, the Bible says, And may you hear the supplication of your servants and your people Israel when they pray toward this place, here in heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. In Psalm 120, 102 verse 19, the Bible says, For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from the heaven the Lord viewed the earth. So we can see here that God dwells in his sanctuary in heaven. The true tabernacle which the Lord erected and not man. And the earthly sanctuary was the copy and shadow of that sanctuary. We can see that in Hebrews 8 verse 5. So what does God do at the heavenly sanctuary? Number one, he governs because his throne is there. Number two, he receives all worship. Number three, he passes judgment. And number four, he ministers for our salvation. Now, the heavenly sanctuary is the place where God governs. In Psalm 103 verse 19, the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. And in Psalm 89 verse 14, the Bible says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. So the character of God is shown in his government and he wants his people to show the same character. In Micah 6 verse 8, the Bible says, He has shown you, O men, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justly to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Now, the heavenly sanctuary is also the place where God is worshipped. John saw the throne of God in Revelation 4 and 5. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were there. It was surrounded by the four living creatures, the 24 elders and millions of angels. In Revelation 15 verse 2, we can see a sea of glass was before the throne. That's where God meets his creatures when they come to him and God receives worship from every creating being over there. So in Revelation 5 30 to 14, the Bible says, And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power to be with him who sits in the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen, and the twenty four elders fell down and worship him who lives forever and ever. Now, the heavenly sanctuary is also the place where God passes judgment. In Psalm 9 verse 7, the Bible says, But the Lord shall endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. So since sin entered the world, the heavenly sanctuary is also the judgment court now. Saints and sinners are judged over there. So God's government is based upon justice and mercy. So we can be confident of his right judgment. His sentence is unappealable. So in Habakkuk 2 verse 20, the Bible says, But the Lord is in, holy, is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. And the heavenly sanctuary is the place where God saves. Hebrews 7 verse 25 says, Therefore he, Jesus, is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. So where does Jesus intercede in our behalf? And where does he get eternal salvation from us? Hebrews 8, 1-2 says, Now this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord erected and not man. So in the review and herald by Mrs. White, January 28, 1890, she said, Christ is in the heavenly sanctuary and he is there to make an atonement for the people. He is there to present his wounded side and pierced hands to his father. He is there to plead for his church that is upon the earth. He is cleansing the sanctuary 
from the sins of the people. So that's the gl first glimpse of the heavenly sanctuary. We'll continue with the lesson of the pre-investigative judgment, and I hope this lesson gives enlightenment to you all. Let's pray together. Thank you so much, all, for blessing us in this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.